So uh, another country, uh, obviously, in the news right now is Ukraine. Um, Secretary Rice, when she was here last week, said that Ukraine is at risk of becoming known as a scandal rather than a country. How do we refocus attention and energy, not just on the role of Ukraine in the U.S.-Russian relationship, uh, but the broader set of relationships uh, we have in the region that are going to be needed to move towards a, a post-Putin Russia at some point in the future? From your lips to God's ears. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I think um, Ukraine is a centrally located, important, strategic country in Europe that straddles east and west. And it has been yearning to be part of Europe. That's what its revolution was about, the Maiden Square Revolution. They've had a lot of mishaps and a lot of setbacks because their leadership was not up to the job. Um, there were several people who tried and were overcome by circumstances, and one uh, Ukrainian president overcome by uh, radiation poisoning, mm. um, and another um, accused of corruption and thrown in jail. And so there, there is a lot of growing pains in Ukraine, and it is a place that I think both Europe and the United States uh, have a real stake in trying to help stabilize, trying to uh, help modernize their economy and support their efforts to move toward uh, a more uh, secure democracy. And of course, we've seen two very aggressive moves just in the last you know, 10, 11 years from Putin. We've seen his invasion of Georgia uh, and the uh, seizing of two provinces in Georgia, one strategically located on the Black Sea, down the road from where he has his dacha, near Sochi, where the Olympics were held. He just basically seized this part of Georgia and another, uh, another part further north. And then, of course, he invaded Ukraine, and he seized Crimea, and he kept troops in eastern Ukraine. Because Ukraine in his view, belongs to Russia. It doesn't belong to the Ukrainian people. It doesn't in any way belong to their aspirations and hopes for being part of Europe and maybe even someday part of the European Union. Uh, and what he has done uh, is to set up a very difficult problem for whoever is in uh, leadership positions in Ukraine. Because with his domination of eastern Ukraine and the presence of Russian troops and the uh, constant arming of Ukrainian civilians who are sympathetic uh, to Russia, uh, if Ukraine doesn't have friends who can try to help deter further Russian aggression, uh, they are in a quandary. Do they place their hopes in Europe and the United States, or do they kind of surrender to the inevitability that Russia could seize them any time they wanted to and mm. nobody would come to their rescue? So the whole Ukrainian uh, scandal in the midst of uh, the impeachment inquiry in and of itself is troubling because of what it shows about abuse of power and uh, the, the use of threats and extortion uh, by uh, the President of the United States um, withholding military aid that they so desperately need to defend themselves. So it's a, it's a scandal. It's, a, it's an absolute appropriate scandal, and it should have triggered the impeachment inquiry. But let's not lose sight of the larger issue that you raise, Mike. The current president of Ukraine who has no political experience. He was a TV star, sound familiar. Um, so <laughs> he, <clears throat> he's in a bind. He's got the American president threatening him. He's got the Russian president threatening him. He's just trying to figure out how to be a president. And from everything we know about him, he, you know, he wanted to bring you know, energy and modernism to his presidency. And 
what's happening now is he's accepted an agreement that there will be elections in Ukraine, in eastern Ukraine, which, remember, the Russians dominate, the Russian media dominates. There'll be elections for the people of that part of Ukraine to decide whether they want to break away and join Russia like Crimea um, or stay in Ukraine. He probably felt like he had no choice. Uh, the Russians are breathing down his necks, and there is evidence that uh, Russian troops are moving uh, to the border again in pretty large numbers. And then one thing that hasn't gotten a lot of attention that I just want to mention is that there is a treaty that we've been a member of, in fact, we were the architect of that goes back many decades, called Open Skies, and it permits satellites and other surveillance uh, uh, mechanisms to see what's happening on the ground around the world. And just out of the blue, the Trump administration announced they were gonna pull us out of the Open Skies Treaty. And if I were guessing, uh, one of the consequences of that is we will not necessarily be able to discover all the troop movements that Russia is engaged in on the brink of forcing their will on Ukraine. So Ukraine deserves a lot more help and a lot more attention um, than we are currently giving it, except in the kind of you know scandal mode. Uh, it's a real country with real people who thought they were gonna get a real chance to have a better future, and now they are caught between our political games here in the United States and Russian aggression, and it's, it's really a very unfortunate situation.